thing I've often said is that if you don't enjoy your job, you really shouldn't do it, you know? I never understand why people stick it around. Yes, I know, I understand, and we've all done jobs like that. You do it because you need a job at the time, you need the money, but what you should do is try and find something that you truly enjoy, even if you're stuck in a job that you can't stand. I think we'd all, it's just common sense, isn't it, really? Let's be honest. So over here, of course, we have uh, what some people might say once very much liked and esteemed National Trust. They, of course, are the National Trust that look after all of those wonderful stately homes that really say British and Wales and Scotland and Ireland and, you know, all of the things that, you know, really are about us. You know, these wonderful homes that have been preserved, that we're allowed to go around in coach loads of people, looking, of course, for the convenience and then a pot of tea. You get the picture. So it comes as a bit of a shock to find from the CEO of the National Trust that apparently, according to her, 70% of the staff that work for her are activists and, more importantly, dislike the British flag. No, truly. Let me explain. Hi, good morning. Nice to see you. Thank you so much as ever for your time. Now, as anybody knows, I'm very patriotic and I know we have a lot of patriotic people around the world. And I've often said, wherever you are in the world, you should embrace your heritage, embrace your country and be proud of it because it's what makes us, you know, whenever you go and visit somewhere. And I've been lucky enough to travel around the world and wherever you go, whether that could be, say, something like Japan or indeed, say, like the Bahamas or Spain or whatever, there's always new things to see and learn and cultures. And that's what makes us all unique, independent and totally different. So the National Trust, if you come to the United Kingdom, has wonderful properties that you could enjoy. But according to the boss who's on over 100,000 plus a year, well, she says this. Speaking at a Labour Party fringe event run by Maureen Common, Hilary McGrady also revealed that the views of her staff are putting the National Trust at odds with the wider public. It's the deal, what I would say to Hillary, you see, because clearly she hasn't got a grip on the staff. Yes, she might run some very prestigious venues and people do enjoy going, but the bottom line is, if you've got 70% of your staff that are activists, then you're pretty useless at actually, well, employing the staff. What happens to going through it? Are they British enough, patriotic enough? How about making them wear I don't know, Union Jack badges, and let's see how repelled they are at that. You get the picture. But what's interesting is in all of this, and as I say, I was a big fan of the National Trust until it went all woke and nonsense. And then, of course, they're blaming the pandemic for uh, funding down and people not donating. No, it's absolute nutters like this that make it really a once valued piece of history. Well, people just don't want to be associated with it. But back to Hillary. You see, never in this piece does she say how she feels. Now, if I was in her position and doing an interview about this particular uh, you know, faux pas of her own staff, wouldn't it be great to be surrounded by British flags? Perhaps, as I say, wearing the aforementioned pin and bigging up all great British values. Oh no, you see, Hillary, according to a source, doesn't want to offend the staff. Now, who's running who? Because the bottom line is, Hillary, if you're on over 100,000 plus a year, you're the boss. In case you'd forgotten, that is your job. And if it means replacing all of those lunatics, the 70% that are not proud to be British, proud to represent these wonderful venues, then they need to go. Or perhaps you need to go. Either way, we all remain proud to be British. And the bottom line is, if you don't like it, go somewhere that you are proud of then. Anybody else agree? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.